Ski resort. See you this fall. It's another day and we're on the mountain working. Uh, what's going on today? Well, I've been working. The guys have been working. You've been out lollygagging or something. No, no. I've been getting vaccinated. All right. Well, like good. a thousand people in a car line. Okay, good. So. Good, good. Well, let me get you up to speed here. The quartz countertops are being installed right now. Sweet. And if you don't know, these can be really expensive. They can. So the best way to get around it is to make a counter offer. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we're okay. also going to put the mantle in now today. You'll, you'll get it later. You'll get it later. I got it. Okay. I got it. All right. And we're going to do some pocket door hardware. Let's get out of here before Jamie says another dad joke. You better hurry up. I'm coming up for one right now. I also picked up another countertop. Actually, I picked up another one before this, and it was completely destroyed. So this is the third one. Something interesting I noticed from the destroyed one is this is only about a quarter inch veneer of marble over top of plywood. And that's why it's only 250 bucks instead of like five or 800 bucks for the same size piece like that. And here it is. Isn't she a beaut, Clark? This is a piece of five by five-ish oak, I believe. It's weathered, it's old. I'm gonna cut it to length right now. I've measured the overall width of the fireplace and then I have to locate these two holes and drill those in the back. And then we can decide what we're gonna make it look like after we can put it up there and know that it fits. He thinks it's out of level, but I don't wanna hear about it if it is. I think it looks good. What? Perfect. All right, no, it's of course it's perfect. What do you? I don't even know why you checked it. What's up, buddy? Maybe I need to get you a real fingernail file. That's a little rough, isn't it? Well, this bastard file is working great right here. What um, kind of file? It says it's a bastard file. It's, it's not a bad word. If it's part does of it, does it really say that? It, it uh, It's in small print here. Nicholson. It's hard to read. It's a real thing. Okay. I'm not even kidding. You know, I just never know what's going to be on these videos till it happens. <laughs> yeah, it's just no big deal. It's just the right. kind of file. It's okay. Just, I don't know what you're thinking, but I don't know either. <laughs> Next thing on my list of things to do is to top out this cap on this half wall here in the stairwell. I'm gonna use a piece of one by eight for the top and I'm gonna use some rip strips for a little trim underneath it. I'm actually gonna be ripping those down to about inch and five eighths wide and then we're gonna rip them to only a half of an inch thick because I don't want this cap rail to be so massively wide. These are just some scraps. I'm gonna nail down a few pieces <clears throat> of scrap that'll allow me to register my rip strips up to this surface as if it's the finish cap, but I don't wanna do the finish cap first. So this will allow me to get my fit on the rip pieces and then I will measure the width and decide how wide I want the top cap and how much it's gonna hang over. And then also it'll help me to center it on my finished installed pieces instead of just a drywall and centering it on that. It'll be easier for me to center it uh, once the side pieces are installed. So that's the direction I'm going. Next task, replace this plywood piece with a real countertop. I don't know why we would <laughs> replace it. She seemed happy with it. So that's just a template. Uh, we'll use it to cut the counter right the first time. Are you ready? Well, I double checked to make sure that the front and the back and all right. that is right. And we want to cut the same amount off both sides. We've got seven eighths coming off each side. And we've got our blue tape so that it doesn't chip as badly. Yep, and it gives me something that my pencil. And you've got your dagger pencil. My, I just <laughs> resharpened it just for this now. Oh, that's going to leave a razor sharp line right, right there. I'm 
pretty happy about that. <laughs> now this one, my template, I actually got a little jag right here inside of my template. You see that? Yeah, look out, jag. I'm just gonna mark the front and the back, and I'm gonna mark a new straight edge because oh, I don't want to. No, we yeah, don't want to cut that. I don't want to trace that. Check out this cutoff here. You saw us going with a skill saw and that's why it's actually wood in the middle, like I mentioned, and just resin on the bottom. About 3 16 of granite or marble on top. That does make it a lot cheaper. And um, I guess it works fine unless you drop it or something. I'm just curious. Jamie let's, wants to break it, so we're gonna do that. Let's just break <laughs> it. Let's just see what it does. Okay, so look at that. Yeah, yeah there is plastic in there. It's made of all kinds of stuff, but it looks like a piece of marble. Jason, don't eat. No, it says Jason's don't eat. This, well, so what you have to do in my oh, house? Oh, Jason's. Yeah. That's yeah. the big difference. Okay. So what you have to do in my house, make sure nobody eats your lunch. <laughs> Starting to move in the granite countertops. Here we go in the upstairs bathroom. They're going to undermount a couple sinks. They're providing those. We got a little fit up issue right here. You can see this gap against the wall. And what we're going to do to take care of that, instead of grinding the granite, we're actually going to cut out this drywall because it's mud it up in the corner a little bit. We're gonna sort of recess it into the drywall some and then the backsplash is gonna cover all that. It'll get this corner nice and tightened up with no grinding on the granite. Appreciate it, buddy. You know what, I really I really don't like watching granite being put in. Did you know that? No. <laughs> I really don't like to watch. Because it, it makes me nervous. I know that. It scares me. So what I like to do is pretend you're not here and then come back when it's all done. Yes. Okay. <laughs> This bracket has some little adjusters right here that actually raise the sink up and press it against the bottom of the countertop. And you can, there's one on each corner. So what you do is you leave it low, you drop the sink in, you put the counter on, you put silicone around the top edge of the sink on this surface right here. And then they'll actually screw it in from the bottom and press the sink up against the bottom of the counter, making sure that the silicone has a nice seal all the way around. That seems pretty brilliant to me. I just opened this and uh, I guess it's been sitting in my garage for a while. <laughs> yes, yeah, it says happy holidays. Thank you, Jessica from Cavity Sliders. She got us a Cavity Sliders emblem, tape measure, metric and inches on there. I think she really gets me because she wrote happy holidays. Hope you have a wonderful, I hope your season is wonderful beyond measure. <laughs> that is your joke. <laughs> she stole your joke. Measure. Man. <laughs> and we got American and metric here. Nice. How about that? Here's our instructions and hardware kit from Cavity Sliders. Thank you to Cavity Sliders for sending this pocket door hardware. There is one critical cut on this hardware where you're actually going to see the cut on the top and bottom of the hardware on the end of the door. So we're making this jig that's the width of the door. We're going to chop it square so that we have something positive and square for our pole saw to ride against so that we start those cuts without, you know, going all over the place like you can sometimes. Right on the line. 
Okay, and we're saving the line, right? Yep. Saving the pencil line. So I should probably go up a fuzz. Got it. Wow, that's crazy. You can see it suck the plunger. I would have never guessed. Yep. I'm trying to mock up my handrail right now. I'm making a wood template so I can take it home and make it out of metal. I'm trying to judge how much space I need to leave between the handrail and this piece of trim. I finally decided what to do. I'm gonna leave an inch and a half space from the trim down to my handrail. That gives adequate clearance while having it in the right code passing range and it feels comfortable, it's a good position. I'm gonna turn and run the flat out to this point right here because it has to go past the nosing at the top at the landing, but my homeowner is gonna put a baby gate up here. So I'm gonna leave like three and a half That's inches. Good to know now. In order to give myself the best chance of not messing this up at home, I'm gonna build an actual complete representation of this handrail, including the little mounting plate right here that I'm gonna have welded on. It'll have four holes in it for screws. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just nail that on there. I'm good right there. Okay, uh, it's looking pretty nice. All right. Right on, we're done with another day up on the mountain and we've got a lot done. Tomorrow we're gonna come back and paint all day again. <laughs> yeah. For real, that's what we're doing. Cause we're almost done. Thank you for building with us and we'll see you on the next one.